who will speak about linking farmers with markets. I now request the speaker to begin. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome, AgriInformation.com lecture series. Uh, already been introduced. I am Dr. V K Jayaragundo. See now, before we actually uh, take up this issue, see today people talk about organic farming. People talk about uh, many new things. They say soilless cultivation. Whether are they fancy words or the really there is some money in this? This is the first question we should be asking ourselves. And uh, why should somebody, well, you know, if he's a farmer, why should somebody invest his very precious time and money and all the resources, land, labor, capital, and technology? And why is that he's going to do it? You know, there's a. You know, even our time is costed, our efforts are costed. But so, is there a market to what we produce? People talk about organic farming. See, if you see all this, uh, uh, many big basket and all that. Everywhere they say organic turdal, organic cucumber, organic gherkins, and so on and so forth. So, how is that only whether they are sourcing from a few uh, farmers or everybody has got opportunity or every farmer is linked? So, this is what will be. Talking and uh, very quickly we'll be going ahead. Okay, and uh, see now, if you see today, the, today we have 300 plus million tons of agri, uh, 335 plus million tons of 40, and then uh, we are almost in a glut sort of situation. So everywhere it's there. So, but whether uh, uh, are they getting the money for that? Are people getting? Uh, are they linked to the market? Or uh, Every time the farmers is taken for a ride. So let us quickly go one by one. To me, if I want to include a small and marginal producer, so at the most I will go with a village merchant or a trader in the village. Okay, Arthias, you know these are the commission agents who are available. So I sell it to them, and then they further the village merchant takes it, and then he does some sort of processing, and then we may have the state trading body. So. The farmer is not at all available, uh, aware that how his produce is really moving to the market, and uh, could he himself have got that particular profit if he had done these roles? Probably. So then we have the wholesaler, the retailer, and ultimately when we you and me buy it in the export or the domestic market, we pay a very huge price. See, I was again giving the example of coffee very recently. See, you know, you know, do you know what is the price of coffee beans? It's hardly 120 rupees per kilo uh, anywhere where you can buy it. But you know, when you buy your coffee powder here, it is 250 rupees for half a kilo. So yesterday, my wife was asking, and I purchased half a kilo of this coffee powder. So he says, uh, Chikori, we says this one, 70, 30. Okay, we have 85, 15, and we are nowadays even this coffee decoction also is coming. So all these things are taken place. We say there is some sort of value addition, and that's the reason the branding, the packing, all those things go together, and therefore he is getting a very high remunerative price. But now why can't this same job, instead of some other aggregator and a producer or a processor or a value chain aggregator doing it, why a farmer cannot do it, and why he should not be able to get? This is the whether have we linked him with the market? So now, if you take the REMS model, okay, that regulated electronic market model, see they, when the market entry is made, they do some sort of sampling, they do grading, online auction, and the electronic payment of the sale, and then online payment is there, and then in the REMS model or the ENAM model, actually REMS model was the beginning, Karnataka was the leader, and then later on only the entire country came out of the ENAM. So in this model. Basically, we are talking that you uh, you register in one particular APMC or ENAM, and you are accessible throughout the country. But again, you know there are certain uh, RTIs, and there is a small uh, cartel going on, and uh, everybody may not really uh, allow you. And you know we say farmers market, right to bazaars. All these are all on paper, but really, whether the nexus is creating loss for the farmer. Or farmer has failed to do the value addition, or he is not able to brand and market it. You know that is a big game by itself. So every time we say 60 paise of the rupee should go to the farmer. So how justified they are? This is the whole thing, and how we can uh, introduce them with the markets. 
See, look at this uh, urbanized uh, things, high performing agriculture, and where we are lagging. See, the cultivation is a very small part. You don't get any much things in cultivation, but the labor contributes more. This is on you know, since the rural labor and agricultural labor gets less, so he has been uh, you know pushing out of uh, villages. And going into the cities, and then trying to make a livelihood. And then now, if you see the consumption pattern, also lot of changes in the consumption pattern. People no longer consume only cereals and rice. See, today they want more of vegetable, they want more of fruit. You see the green one that is increasing, and then you also want the animal proteins, meat, eggs, and fish. So as the income increases, people also consume more of milk and milk products. and of course the pulses have been almost inelastic and uh, not much and the edible oil so therefore it is high time that farmer also if he has to link himself with a good market have a buyback with big basket or with uh, fresh to home and uh, there are many such um, aggregators in the urban areas so you will have to see this consumption pattern and then start producing and even uh, you know link yourself with this uh, a uh, big bazaars and that sort of supermarkets so now the diet diversity and declining importance of staple grains is very important because more the income in cities more you go for the meat fish and eggs and vegetables and things and the coarse grain is really less how much of uh, rice we can eat we can't eat much whereas the poor will be there so therefore uh, after all if you are producing you should see whether your produce is moving to the poor consumer or the high income consumer or your Uh, targeting it to the cities. So when you are targeting it to the cities, obviously segregation, branding, grading, and all these issues are there. And uh, because of that, you will have to link yourself with these sort of high-value markets, and then you have to make your business. Otherwise, simply you produce and then hand it over to the artia or the aggregator uh, is not going to solve your problem. So this is where today's topic, uh, rightly agriinformation.com, has. ask me to speak on how to link these people see now we say the agri or hearty is a value chain extension curriculum so we should see that the farmer is going to do this sort of a value chain addition why can't he prepare a coffee powder why can't he prepare a coffee decoction or why can't he do it and why he is leaving it to the other things when he himself has the produce he has got excess surplus and why is he not he does not have the agri business mindset See now, he has only become a part of the supply chain, but he has not become a part of the value chain. See, because in value chain, the supplier or the farmer has to do some sort of product development, some innovation planning, and try to reach the customer. Because otherwise, in supply chain, he simply hands over the material to someone else. Someone else does the value addition, converts it into pizza, burgers, or whatever, whatever, and then he does the sales and marketing. and reach the customer so what we wish to say today is if at all we want a farmer to link himself with the market he should move from a supply chain methodology to a value chain methodology and try to take up the activities more and more so in the value chain so that's what we wish to say and then you see a lot of pluralistic agencies and you know the ministry of agriculture horticulture midh so they've all been working on this but uh, ultimately when we say why the farmer is not linked he is linked only to the supplier or maybe the farmer is not interested to do those value chain activities and then what sort of skills and uh, knowledge sets he require to reorient himself and you know emerge in a new avatar so that's what we been telling so obviously the strategies have been moving from livelihood security from natural resource management to entrepreneurship and then you know you read this slide from bottom to top and then going toward the food safety cash and export crop commercialization focus and obviously the household security see this is how we want to do this one and even extension also has been gearing up you know earlier we simply told about transfer of technology today we talk about value chain extension and then we also talk about commodity extension so we have moved away from the training part to creating value in this business and doing that sort of extension so many of the extension uh, approaches today earlier it was only education and today we are highly technology driven and need driven and ultimately we come out of this pluralistic 
commercial services. You can see many of the apps and all that. That's how we have been trying to integrate. But how much the farmer is going to take benefit of this and leverage himself and position is a million dollar question. So now, how to link him with the market? Obviously, we create a list of uh, market opportunities for a farmer. We identify strengths and weakness. So we compare market opportunities, whether farmer can access it. And we investigate the entire link in detail then let the farmer decide whether he can grow those market led crops so and we do many sort of value chain meetings we know simply you do packing and you know today in Bangalore and many places people even get vegetables cut okay so no need of cutting so these are small small value addition they have been doing to improve the income and uh, see today nobody is going to cut a jackfruit or something else even they are all pre-cut and you know, uh, I don't think except in villages, nobody kills a hen or a cock to eat it. So they are all dressed chicken and all, even meat products come in that particular packing. So finalizing the action plan with farmers, whether he can take up these value addition opportunities and then leverage himself in the market. See now, now I am going to ask you a million dollar question, whether farmer has the required skills does he have land? Does he have inputs? Does he have the finance? And even the small post harvest processing, suppose he has got four market opportunities. Okay, I will give him market opportunity. But does he have the skill set? See, it is somebody was saying, whether the car is important or the driving is important. So obviously, the million dollar answer, I am telling you again and again, it is only the driving which is important and not the car. You might take an Audi car, but if you do not know how to drive and tap the market opportunity, you are not going to make much out of it. So therefore, now the focus is to link farmers with market, is to improve his skill sets. So to convert his land to a bigger opportunity, land, you know, how best utilization of land. So there is a Bureau of Land Use and Planning. So that's why we say, see, instead of, see, today given a chance, everybody would like to convert the land into commercial sites, building complexes and you know that's how you see many of the areas in Bangalore they were all very traditional areas in 50 years they have all become commercial hubs okay people start selling even small small you know how many hotels have come up forget hotels today with online marketing they everything becomes a business opportunity so given the thing whether farmer can do this one so now look at this particular graph the red is all the cost of production the cost of production should not rise but whereas the green one the net income is rising so how is the net income of whether fresh value vegetables or coffee is increasing despite the cost of production being a stagnant thing this is only by value addition tapping the markets okay processing handling supply chain so all these issues are giving this high green one you are seeing here the income can be increased and farmer can tap this sort of link themselves with markets because there is big money here see after all the cost of production is not so much see it's something like uh, you know producing groundnuts and then frying the groundnuts and preparing recipes out of it and then marketing at uh, a distant and see that's how we have to have a supply chain network so otherwise definitely if you do not link yourself with market okay you are not going to make big money see earlier it was all substance and farming so what we did we have now come out of the farmer organization okay we tried you know there are two issues in uh, farmer producer organization we say that the input factorization is occurring but the output commercialization is not occurring the output commercialization comes with market linkage and innovations Okay, people at the production cost, I already showed you in the, see here, I have already showed you that uh, the cost of cultivation is not increasing. <coughs> but we want the output marketing to increase for which you should have the value chain approach. So, similarly, the other interventions are, even suppose you want to commercialize a small farm and go big. So, there is no point in simply production, but you should think more of the value addition and even by value addition, your income is going to increase. So, whether 
can you tap those multiple million opportunities can you move from subsistence farming method you know earlier people were doing only zooming cultivation they were all nomads so they were not even thinking of enriching the soil today natural farming came okay rejuvenating soils has come so many other issues have come to make the farms more and more sustainable but ultimately the winner and the uh, fellow who can make profit and money is only through value addition and an efficient supply chain and that's how we should tap is markets so we have been telling all that okay we have already told you about this See, look at this suppose i have three vegetables see today what are the three vegetables consumed in uh, bangalore coimbatore or mumbai obviously one of my student is working on this shweta navade works on this particular concept it are there all the gherkins the sweet cuco english cucumbers and broccoli okay these are the very high value things that today we are uh, using even protected cultivation to grow these things so the english cucumber on one side the broccoli on the other side okay and then the gherkins and all these things and the bell pepper also is coming in a very big way see earlier you know we were eating only green bell pepper see today you take out the colored one the paprikas so you name it you have a color in bell pepper you have the yellow one the red one the green one so these are all uh, what the consumer wants and you are still continue to uh, produce and uh, and you are not able to tap this market so if i have three vegetables i should think of how can i be consistent in supply whether they are fresh on arrival shelf life taste since about bell pepper comes in three different tastes okay blemishes and food safety damage due to packing and transport okay the supply is very inefficient see for example milk if you take see we are number one in the whole world of milk production but still if i am seeing that we have pluralistic uh, agencies who supply milk it may be nandini dairy mascati it may be heritage and so on and so forth but still you know not a single packet of milk is left in any shop who is a retailer and i don't know people must be consuming a lot of milk so in spite of multiple brands multiple suppliers today we have a plethora of this milk producers but the money is there only in efficient supply chain and value chain so Uh, how will you best you score with the current supply this is what we'll be seeing when i link farmers with markets so now there was a small analysis done uh, that you know out of 1 rupee uh, the agri inputs take 25% see suppose if the net profit and the gross profit is calculated 30% is the contribution in a regression equation with the marketing related issues all others are all production oriented see value addition is about 12% aggregation is the only you know is the supply chain aspect you take it and lift it and uh, give it today many people do business only by aggregation he does not do any production or value addition he is only an aggregator so many such people are there but the marketing related issues take away a solid 30% so therefore there is big money in this and farmer should definitely take up this marketing related role and then he should try to improve his profit and link himself so now earlier you know people were emphasizing more on production natural resource management and then it was only production production and production today when the fpo concepts have come we have organized the unorganized farmers we have put them on an fpo we have put them on the cluster based business organization so suppose you know if you collect 1 lakh rupees the government of india is going to give another 1 lakh as a matching grant and that's how the uh, there was a lot of rejuvenation of the fpos i did cover in one of my last lectures and more organized farmers so even you can have a buyer or a contract farming for example one of my students anjali sati works in amazon so all this pre harvest uh, hedging and other contracts are in place and that's how you have to tap these markets you can't be very blind and say that you will take a basket of tomatoes and throw it near the railway station and go away and then you have contribute to jai jawan jai kisan that is not the approach today more organized farmers more uh, buyer contract farming support for business development see i keep telling the farmers whenever i go with them why can't the farmer producer organization have a small outlet in bangalore and then from there why doesn't he establish a supply chain why doesn't he 
can have, they're all not very costly. It requires a little bit of uh, stressing and straining yourself on the mental front. So now the value proposition and the customer relationships have to be definitely built uh, by the farmer. See, look how many actors are there. The farmer, the aggregator, processor, trader, wholesaler, retailer, and consumers. Now we say, why the farmer cannot take this aggregator, processor, trader, and other role? Is he lazy or does he lack skills? Or does he lack the infrastructure or the ecosystem? These are all million dollar questions. And then the production and supply is in the blue color. Marketing and delivery is in the other half. So based on the demand, uh, you put your cost structure and revenue models, and then the business durability and competitiveness has to be increased. Obviously, the value proposition, even by changing hands, by, you know, we say the Kotler's 4P model, we say the price, place, product, and the promotion. The, all these things are going to determine the price, not just the cost of production. See, for example, you prepare plain rice, the cost of production may be very less. You simply add, you know, some uh, you know, some tarka to it and then make it very palatable. That is value addition. It can go to different things. See, instead of simply producing rice and cooking rice, you obviously add value even while eating. So that's uh, the same thing has to come in this business plans and models. So now, see, today, uh, you know, the production front, there are umpteen number of extension and other organizations are going to give, but uh, we want more on market information, praise, warehousing support, telecommunication, okay, how they link themselves to the financial institutions for things. Then other providers like markets, say all on the right side. These are all missing legal services because any one mistake you do may end up with the last post harvest, storage, processing, grading, and packing. So the new business models are coming with the certification services, especially in organic. Uh, farm produce, uh, where, you know, I told you that the nitrogen is picked up in the ionic form, whether you put it in organic farm or inorganic farm, the plant cannot identify that. Plant picks up nitrogen, N plus, the 14 is the atomic weight, and uh, so therefore it picks up like that. So you require more of certification services, and we say inclusive chain-wide support. See, look at how the field agent Right from unorganized producers, the lead farmers, they come with the FPO. These, these different colors have been given. Yeah, because uh, they have been organized into cluster-based business organization. We have somebody working on fortified uh, tomatoes, fortified uh, staples, high-value crops, and so on. For each and everything, there is a cluster. The field agent through the ICTs is going to aggregate all this, and then they are going to put uh, the group trading committees and then you link them with the markets and then they can one or two of the uh, federations can you know negotiate with the traders and uh, the federations so that's how we are going to do collective marketing organizations have come the farmer groups are being linked with the traders and then the bulk traders process so why not we go higher and higher and try to capture a big supermarket so we have this, you know, Royal Mart, or we have this big basket, or we have so many other marts. Why don't you directly supply to it? Why do you want so many interviews? Uh, chain facilitation. So this is what we've been saying. These are also methods to change this in farmer organization. So first of all, if the farmer is disorganized, definitely you cannot access a market. So uh, your negotiation... Uh, power, your bargaining power is going to increase. The farmer groups and the link to high value markets, see only a few markets are uh, tapped by the farmers. So then don't blame and say that, you know, that farmer did influence. I was not able to tap the market. You also can tap the market provided you get yourself organized. See, today, you know, there is an employment exchange. Suppose you want to work in cinemas, you require a broker or require somebody to promote you. See, everywhere it's all about how you promote, pick up, okay? There was a saying in Sanskrit, Udhyamenavahi Siddhyanti Karyani Cha Manorathaihi Nahi Suptasa Simmasya Pravishanti Mukhe Murgaha So that means 
the the deer is not going to enter the mouth of the hungry lion when it is sleeping the lion will have to go out and then you know hunt for its food so today it's all the pussy cats the big cats and the tigers you will have to be a bit aggressive in marketing and not open a small shop you are a pussy cat in a corner even there you know i have seen in urban areas uh, they do good business but farmer if he has to do where is the shops where are the business organizations where where are your outlets in the cities have you organized himself see government can give you an ecosystem but you will have to fight out and have a developmental strategy for the marketing part so obviously there are other uh, market linking activities advertisements business branding i told you little little value addition right from decoction chikori uh, 80 15 70 and having small exhibitions melas so now it's all the mango season so you'll see a lot of mango melas coming and now is also the election season so everybody is putting up some hoardings and then they are creating these outlets so handing out samples and offering discounts network with people if it today how is that we network if whatsapp and twitter and uh, things are stopped for 15 minutes you get a heart attack so always be connected on the network simply producing see it's only the intelligent fellow see today how is business made see people are there to negotiate for small small business deals even for defense deals and all you have got somebody we have got arbitrator we have got a negotiator we got everything but uh, when it comes to farmers he simply give hands it over to the aggregator or rtr traders because already has taken a loan from him and then that is all the linking he has with the market so now uh, how to improve i told you the input suppliers on one side it may be cooperative agri dealer either i told you in the uh, input factorization the selling inputs and you know but this purchasing output is a weak link and obviously you know this kisan rat and other apps have come and uh, you know you should also work out your transportation logistics warehouses see at least temporarily you should be able to store your produce See, otherwise you will have to do distress sale so remember anything when you do distress sale your bargaining power is less and then you know you cannot get that expected income so output marketing and the logistics part of it so with little uh, processing and value addition you can definitely improve your secondary outcomes and the intermediary outcomes so i am not saying just increasing yield will solve your problem and productivity we know that the more crop per drop all those things have been beaten to death but we have to improve our remuneration we have to improve our uh, price uh, things it should have more variability that should be say volatility in the market see go for a better market where more demand is there supply is there why do you supply it in a place where your demand is less see today you know people don't work in india because how much money you can get when your demand for that particular skill or uh, income is high people push off so they try to make more income so that how it should be done see earlier people were giving credit only for the input the red one but today they started giving commercialization credit also so that means people want to link you more and more with the markets so that you can uh, establish a warehouse gramin bhandar and yojana the agri infrastructure fund we were consultants in the north east for the agri infrastructure fund with 3% rate of interest a mid term loan is going to be given to you for 5 crores you should start establishing this see otherwise the aggregator is not doing a great job he has only investment and he has the jo hindi mein bolte hai na usko market ke bahut pakad hai so he knows the market he knows where to invest so that function can definitely be taken see now we say there is another uh, farmer linking with market pay for performance see now we know we have empowered women i was in telangana for 20 years i've been working in bangalore the past 4 5 years so definitely the social empowerment by training and gender awareness we can improve the productivity levels of marketing even among women and other people uh, it's only a question of training and how you build your capacity and how that leads to economic empowerment and access to markets and credit and so on 
so people are really blind about it agriculture means it is agreeing culture simply produce and throw it on somebody's head and go away see with that sort of approach and a strategy you will not be able to make good profits see i was giving an example there was a small outlet called veena stores very near my house that fellow was not doing anything even today he does not do great things he simply prepares idlis and vadas today you know yes yes me amass it so much of property so it is not just by the idli and vada but that fellow had a product strategy he had a he had a business strategy you know today that fellow has gone online so that is how you know in a business you have to diversify if you want to make money otherwise don't make money go to the temple and tell some gods names and then be happy be complacent nobody has to but when it comes to link the farmers and market i give you examples of mangoes see now there's a c difference alfonso mango is sold at about 150 to 200 rupees good one kesar alfonso and all that but at the village level when the the aggregator picks it up he pays you hardly 80 rupees okay so the rest of value addition has gone in transporting he all then he is also going to supply to some retailer so retail so from the producer to the aggregator to the uh, wholesaler to the retailer this is how the supply chain model is going to be there and then you can definitely structure these tasks because the present ecosystem supports all these things okay so i think uh, my i still have time around uh, uh, 10 20 minutes uh, 10 minutes to be very precise after that we'll open it so now pay for performance the entry point is see by giving good training your performance improves access to credit your empowerment is there you can open shops then giving you some basic input provision storage and other infrastructure and the warehouse you can definitely open a shop in a urban area or in where the demand exists and supply exists post harvest equipment graders and all that you can do it then gender awareness who told women can't do anybody can do see today there are a lot of difference half the people want to live on pension and social social security money they don't want to do anything people say uh, you know there was there was a small joke somebody asked someone why are you lazy and why are you sleeping why don't you earn money and be happy so he said i am already happy and god's grace is there on me so therefore i need not earn so if this is the attitude of a businessman i am sorry gentlemen you don't do anything and you know okay if you are very happy with just producing as a farmer that's your wish but don't crib and say that you know you were not given the opportunity to make money okay now i'll very quickly see that how the agri market ecosystem in karnataka has done we came out to the rems model the regulated electronic marketing scheme which has later on become the enam and uh, Karnataka also we have two in arms, one in arm. Uh, okay, we have one in uh, two in Gulbarga to be precise. So we have been working on that. Here it's all how they do the action, and then how many markets are there? How people are uh, secondary market, resale, process sale. So around two thousand five hundred main APMC markets are there. Four thousand five hundred secondary market yards. Goods more than three lakh crore traded annually. But now. of course i am not supporting or uh, going against the the new farm bills which are spurred so now apmc and rems and enam is your only source of marketing where already the established middlemen are there so therefore the new farm bills had come out with a proposal saying that why don't you strike your own uh, you know uh, uh, producer to marketer to trader nexus why don't you build that particular business model enough opportunities were given but since the people who revolted and resisted they're all paddy farmers i told you when the food uh, dietary habits are changing today we are no longer uh, staple based nobody eats half a kilo of rice so given a chance you know even in place like uh, bangalore they eat donne biryani you know it's all value added rice with lot of meat products animal proteins people want that sort of thing animal protein who is going to eat only rice only poor fellows will eat rice 
and you know they say papu and karam you know it's simply that when the food habits have changed you will also have to change your market ecosystem and strike your own contacts see there are people who supply you know there are uh, so many supply chain models if you have got a good for example the appe midi pickle you know uh, 12th and 13th we have in ihr the appe midi fair is coming see you must not have eaten this appe midi pickle you are only eating that cut mango pickle appe midi pickle has got more of phenols and terpenes and it is a very good for health and all the taste part of it but you know uh, making a supply chain and linking to the markets is a bit tough job there so apart from uh, the prevailing market scenario where uh, more uh, traders and uh, markets are fragmented okay and then the quality is not standardized you can definitely establish and link yourself with niche markets you can be a supplier <coughs> so that's about it and uh, i'll very quickly many uh, see increased competition was one in the agriculture market reform transparency was under improved market access is under alternative markets are under market automation was under which came out with the e nam then farmers empowerment so in spite of giving all these things there is some inertia people do not want to go and become aggressive trader traders and all that you know that's why the traders job, job is of that of the trader there's a specific community to do the job but why don't people take up these jobs is the question so look at how competition has been increased transparency is there market access is there and alternate markets are there obviously with contract farming cooperatives warehouses agri infrastructure fund you can definitely structure this and also yeah, we have this special purpose uh, uh, vehicles which are operated in the rems okay so that it is also going to do grading then uh, uh, no little bit of this also so to make the market parchment so very sustainable so it's been increasing the enam and all these things are increasing and then the uh, you know the profit is also increasing more and more of cleaning and grading unit especially more money is there in uh, packing branding and supplying and that way it is an online delivery and if uh, farmer producer organization come now mango season has come but i don't see many of them uh, in the online platform it is only that uh, mango portal of karnataka government and then some big basket they keep announcing i think uh, these are all not such big uh, rocket science that a farmer cannot do it so with this gentlemen i think uh, we ended this stage uh, since your thanks i'll be opening it for discussion so now the discussion points can be why farmers are not getting linked to markets whether it is there in asia or there is no ecosystem or uh, value processing and all is very difficult or people have become highly fatalistic fatalistic means you know anyway i am going to suffer so god alone can help me that is called fatalism we say in sociology so many dimensions may be there gentlemen i open this talk for discussion i am stop shy i will be stop sharing over to rajini ma'am and dhanlakshmi ma'am thank you thank you sir for very de- for a very detailed presentation now i'll take up some questions we don't have much questions so simple simple small questions so uh, first question is how do you help farmers in linking up with today's market so market. now yeah now uh, my experience with working with fpos and all is we go to the farmer producer organization already they are aggregated we prepare the, the detailed project reports both on production front and input factorization front and also how they can market their outputs what are the distant markets and uh, let us say i got three markets market 1 2 and 3 and then i will be also telling them how much profit they can make in each market so i'll give you an example of bajra for example if you sell it in the market is 2200 per quintal suppose you put it to the lucknow market it's going to be selling at 3500 rupees per quintal but in that is now he should work out the profit and the drudgery which is involved how much transfer we work out all that and give but what i feel is in spite of all this help farmer says the for me 2200 is enough i don't want 3500 because i don't want to crack my head by 
preparing the DPR and working out the financial feasibility and so on. Okay. So next question, how do the farmers adapt to current agriculture technology? See in the technology front, farmers are very fast. They are more than us. They are more than agriculture scientists. You know, we should have given him a 57 page. Whether it is Arca Microbial Consortia, the liquid formulation we made at IHR where uh, 10 ml is going to be put in 1 liter. So it, uh, that's how today it's all soilless cultivation, grow back technology and then you know we uh, give this nutrient Arca Microbial Consortium spray. Technology friends, they are very quick to adapt and they will do it. But unfortunately these fellows are not good in marketing and then the entire money see out of 1 rupee they get only not even 40 paisa. That means not even 40 percent of the profit they get and uh, later on you know some politician is going to aggregate all these fellows and start blaming and then uh, they put up a sugar cane thing in Mandya and then they throw the tomatoes near uh, Lal Bagh and uh, uh, Vidhan Sauda and all that. If they are not cribbing then there is no issue but I still feel that there is enormous potential for marketing but their production front and technology front they are brilliant. You name any technology recently I was also on Doordarshan and any TV program and then YouTube channels. Uh, we have got a YouTube channel called Arka Samachar. Very fortunately we do it. So people are absorbing the information. They are consuming information. They use it. A uh, production friend, I told you, their record, 335 million metric tons. No problem at all. But their marketing is not there and their money is not there. Okay. Uh, sir, you talk, talked about the YouTube channel. Can you just uh, spell it out? Yeah, our, we so have a YouTube channel. Okay, ours is called Arka Samachar. That is it a is YouTube a channel and even IRA is having Pusa Samachar. So, every ICR institute is having a YouTube channel. Okay, you simply type agriculture information or Samachar. So, yeah, okay. many institutes are coming out with these YouTube channels and lot of technology information is broadcasted fortnightly. For example, Pusa Samachar uh, is a fortnightly service. Arka Samachar is a weekly service. Okay, and then there are umpteen number of mobile apps. Uh, like we have Arka Vyapar. It is already on Google Play Store. It is functioning well. So like this uh, production oriented, marketing oriented technologies are available. They are streamed. You simply have to go to the YouTube and say agriculture information. It will show you so many channels for you to access. Okay. And uh, next question, are farmers able to adapt to digital payment system? No, no, they will adapt to digital payment. Uh, but now, the, all that see, now their digital payment is not coming because digital payment should come only for output marketing. See, regarding their fertilizers, inputs and all the other seeds material, the e each FPO is buying it in bulk and supplying. That's why we say the input factorization is occurring. So with good bargaining they are able to get their inputs. So digital payments, they are, they are already well aware. They know all that. But he was doing digital payment only for input marketing. But his output marketing, he has to receive money from the various traders and that too based on grading and all. He is already online and phone pay, Google pay is working. He is already done. No. As on date, no cash transaction. Absolutely no cash. They are, they are doing the digital one. Okay. So, yeah. So, now we have the last question. What's your advice to the farmers how to link up their produce with markets? See, farmers have to, you know, they have to meet all this uh, Amazon, Big Basket, uh, Fresh to Home. There are thousands of aggregators uh, in cities because city is the main hub where your marketing is going to take place. Fresh fruits or vegetables, milk, dairy, eggs, poultry and so on and so forth. So now they have to link because most of our farmers have not organized themselves and second part is they are not accessing the big markets like Bangalore and all that. They are only local market. A farmer in Hassan at the most he is going to Hassan Taluk and then selling it. So, the but the aggregator is further 
uh, establishing and having supply chain but he can link up and they are not linking i think there is some inertia in the farmers or they feel that the effort is not worth it but you know see i i find people from coimbatore vegetables coming here but our kolar vegetables don't come to the market the what should be the reason the coimbatore farmers have organized and they have, I, i'm honestly telling you for example you get uh, broccoli bell pepper and all that okay they come from dotbalapur in some places they have organized but if you see the market and apply the rfid technology people in and around bangalore only are not able to access that means they they have inertia they are not organized this much i can say so keeping bangalore city the peri urban areas must have done it maybe their quality or their commissions or uh, the terms of trade is not good so even today we get uh, all our poultry products from namakkal okay vegetables from coimbatore okay it's like that for example kerala has been very very poor in uh, accessing the market karnataka is better i can say i'm telling you the andhra pradesh is much better we get everything from chittur whereas we have our own malur here we don't get it so it will depends on the robustness and the supply chain value chain uh, linked by the farmers and the organizations okay okay sir i don't see any more questions from our participants so now we have come to end of question round on behalf of agriculturinformation.com we like to thank you for a very detailed presentation and answering all the questions in depth and we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting the meeting will now be closed have a good and safe weekend okay thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity good luck you are most welcome sir thank you